When you think of wrongful convictions in Canada, you likely know the big names, the big cases. There's Donald Marshall Jr., David Milgard, Guy Paul Moran. But there are many more that you haven't yet heard of. Our next guest co-founded the Canadian Registry of Wrongful Convictions, which currently has 83 names on it and counting. Kent Roach has just written a fascinating new book. It highlights those lesser known names and cases and it lays out where our justice system is failing as well as how we can improve it. Kent Roach is joining us this morning. Welcome. Good morning. I'd like to start where this where this book starts, which is with false guilty pleas. I think a lot of people would have trouble wrapping their head around why somebody would plead guilty if they're innocent. Yeah, I mean, we saw this in a lot of cases involving Charles Smith, the baby death cases. So basically, people are charged with murder, and they're given a deal to plead guilty to manslaughter. Murder has mandatory life imprisonment, so many of the wrongfully convicted in those cases chose to plead guilty to manslaughter or infanticide and, and receive a, a fairly lenient sentence. You say 83 wrongful convictions in the Canadian registry, 15 are false guilty pleas, and then 73% of those false guilty pleas were made by women, Indigenous or racialized persons, or by those with a mental disability. And you talk about the case of Jamie Gladue. This is one that's haunted you for years. Can you share with us that story? Yeah, well, um, I represented Aboriginal Legal Services in the case, and it was about sentencing. But since then, uh, uh, Concerns have been raised that she may have had a defense when she pled guilty to manslaughter. So she was charged with murder at the last minute after the jury, probably with no Indigenous people, were selected. She chose to plead to manslaughter. So we had some success on the sentencing issue, but maybe she should never be guilty anyway. And of course, her case is not on the registry because the registry only measures those that have received remedies. So this is really, uh, uh, unfortunately, the tip of the iceberg. Kent, the way you lay out this book makes it really easy to imagine yourself in that position. What would I do? And you outline the cases where people put their trust in the justice system and it did not come through for them. Along with the false guilty pleas, you also unpack what you've titled imagined crimes. One of the names that comes up a lot is disgraced pathologist Charles Smith. We remember this story. His opinion played out in an important role in a number of wrongful conviction, convictions. He was an expert. People trusted him. Can you explain what an imagined crime is? Yeah, an imagined crime is when there's a suspicion, whether it's in an expert witness like Smith or in the police, and then it blossoms and infects the entire system. And the system is designed to be a check, but it often, or, you know, it doesn't always work. And so, you know, one of the things is Smith thought dirty because he was concerned about undiagnosed child, child abuse. But one of the things that I raise is to some extent, Extent, we all think dirty. We all think when a person is charged, they must be guilty. And we have to guard against that. I want to talk about another case. It involves a man named Thomas Yebbies. What happened to Thomas? Well, Thomas was, again, this, this is an imagined crime in that he was in a marital dispute. There was a fire. His two young adopted sons died in the fire. And the fire expert thought that the fire was deliberately set. Since that time, the science has has evolved. And his wrongful conviction was overturned. His 1987 wrongful conviction was only overturned in 2021. One of the reasons we started the registry and I wrote this book is that his case received very little publicity. And much of the registry, which is based on public data, is based on the work of investigative journalists. Mm -hmm. And as we know, there are unfortunately less investigative journalists today mm -hmm. than there were 20 years ago. I think, Kent, that's what fascinated me about this book, is we know about the, about the headline names, but there's so many more people and stories that when people know about them, they think this is an injustice. What's wrong with our system? You also get into that in this book, and we've just scratched the surface. I would encourage Canadians to read more about it. The book is called Wrongfully Convicted. Kent, thanks for joining us today. Thank you very much. Hey, thanks for watching. If you liked this, be sure to subscribe here, or you can check out more Your Morning videos right here.